I think U.S. policy toward Asia will remain consistent. Of course, if Secretary Clinton becomes uh, the president, and I think she's the favorite at least right now, uh, we would expect to see a continuation of the policy since she was part of the architect of, of the focus on, on Asia. Uh, there is, of course, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of confusion, a lot of apprehension uh, regarding a Trump presidency, but it's very important to understand that the U.S. shift toward Asia really started uh, during the Bush administration, the George H.W. Bush administration in 1989 at the end of the Cold War, when the U.S. realized that our national interests focused on the Pacific and that the 21st century would be the Pacific century. And this has been a consistent policy. It's driven not by Democratic or Republican ideology. It's driven by U.S. national interests. And those na national interests are not likely to change. So I would think that uh, we will continue to do that. Uh, there's an old saying, I think, attributed to Churchill that said, Americans normally do the right thing after exhausting all other possibilities. Uh, Mr. Trump right now seems to be exhausting a lot of those possibilities. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think U.S. national interests uh, demand that we remain engaged in the Asia-Pacific region. Uh, we, of course, also have a series of checks and balances in the U.S., uh, and the Congress is still very much uh, in, enthused about remaining a, an Asia-Pacific power, uh, so that will put limits on the president, even if he was thinking the other direction. So we've been an Asia power since before we had an Asia, a Pacific coast, uh, I expect that will continue regardless of who becomes the next president of the United States.